Okay. Okay. So, okay. Okay. So, thank you for the nice introduction. Did you okay? Yeah. I'm coming back from Oxford uh, this summer, and I started uh, my the new research group at Wigan. The our interest is some metacognition. The uh, yeah cognition about cognition and maybe that, that is a uh, popular the topics in your seminar but uh, today the, I want to show you some findings of the neural process of the metacognition that I found uh, in the, some studies in the Oxford okay. and in Tokyo okay okay so the, our interest is uh, thought our thought of the humans and how we understand the external world. Okay. So please see, uh, sorry. Please see the, this uh, picture. The, this is a self-portrait uh, that is drawn by the Escher. The Escher is a very popular the artist, uh, drawers of the, some the masterpiece of the illusions. But uh, yeah, in this picture, the, he draws uh, his own uh, uh, figures, uh, the, but uh, his uh, own body is uh, reflected by the very the, uh, the, uh, uh, iron the balls, and that reflects uh, yeah, his shape. So the, yeah, the, this self-portrait that illustrate the introspection that I'm very interested. And uh, here, the Escher's uh, see his face, and and he, uh, he uh, sees uh, he is in the room, and uh, he is seeing the himself. Okay, so the in this situation, the mental state that uh, he works. Is uh, introspection. Uh, introspection. In this situation, he understands that uh, he is uh, watching the, his own the face, and he is recognizing that uh, he is in his room. Okay? So the, I think that the introspection is that uh, some the cognitions of the self and the environment and uh, the interaction of the this. But uh, our interest is that uh, to investigate uh, this metacognition, uh, this introspection, but uh, this, the, it is a bit difficult to investigate only in the humans because the uh, method we can apply is limited. But uh, we uh, apply the, uh, this uh, paradigm to the animals like uh, macaque monkeys and the, some uh, psychological study that shows that uh, some animals, including monkeys, has the ability to the introspection. So the, in our research, the, we develop some the psychological paradigm to examine the introspections of the monkeys. And then the, we examine the, how the brain works by using the more uh, fine and more invasive method. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, introspection. Okay. It's uh, related to the, some of the process that calls the metacognition. Okay. So metacognition is that uh, the cognition of the cognition and then the, some of the mental process to uh, understand that uh, how the, the subject, the, the oneself is thinking about. So the, yeah, in, in this situation is that the, the, this monkey is thinking about the, his memory, the, I think some the diary, but uh, some the metacognitive process of the, this monkeys is that the, the, he is understanding that uh, he is uh, recalling the, some memories, okay? But uh, this understanding is uh, related to the, some evaluations or the monitoring of the, this process itself. So the, in some situations, uh, the, this monkey uh, is uh, very confident that about the past memory, but uh, 
some, in some situations, he feels very uncertain about this memory. Okay? This kind of the self-evaluation is a, a metacognition and for the introspection of the past, this metacognitive uh, uh, processing is uh, quite important. And actually, the past uh, neuroscience studies focus mainly on the, this uh, introspection for the past. Okay. But in our study, okay, we focus on the features of the introspection for future vision making. Okay. In the ecological situation, okay, sometimes the, some the subjects like animals, humans, the use this metacognitive process for the future uh, actions, like the so planning uh, to go to the somewhere, so the planning for the explorations, or the planning to look for some food in the field. Okay, to so make the, this uh, plan, okay, some um, this uh, metacognition is uh, quite important. But uh, I, uh, we call uh, this type of metacognition as a prospective metacognition. But uh, in the previous study, uh, this pr prospective metacognition is not examined well. Okay. So the, in our study, we first focus on the, this uh, uh, feature of the metacognition. Okay. So make sense so far? Okay. Okay. So uh, to uh, examine the, this uh, uh, prospective feature of the metacognition, okay, we, at the same time, we focus on the two different type of uncertainty or the probabilities. Okay. Please imagine the situation that uh, you have to drive to a restaurant for dinner, but uh, the car you drive has no car navigation system. In this situation, uh, for the future dinner, okay, you need to think about the two different types of the probability. Okay? One probability is the uh, environmental probability we call, or the external probability, and this is related to uh, whether the restaurant is open or closed uh, when the, you decided to drive. Okay? Okay? This kind of the probability Yes, it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, beyond uh, some, someone's control. And this is determined by the environmental the situation. So that we call the, this as the external probability. The other probability that you need to think about in this situation, it's a more subjective probability. Okay? In this situation, you need to uh, retrieve and uh, uh, remember the route to the restaurant because the uh, car navigation system is not installed, okay? So the how high probability the you can arrive at the restaurant is uh, another the type of the uncertainty or the probability, okay? So the, our interest is that uh, how the, our brains uh, compare the, these two kinds of probability before the decision making. Like the before the, to decide to which restaurant you uh, go to. Okay. And we focus on some of the brain activities uh, during the comparison of the, this probability that we can see some brain mechanism for the metacognitive judgment for the futures. Okay. And we can also examine the brain activities uh, during the, doing the, some task, like the, doing some the driving. And then the, we can see the, uh, how confident the, they can do the task. In this case, the, they can drive without kind of issue. So yeah, uh, in this study, okay, uh, we developed the psychological the paradigm to compare the two kinds of probability, okay, 
real decision making by using some of the psychophysical the, uh, stimulus the setup. So the, yeah, uh, in our research, okay, to test the brain process to compare the internal and external probabilities, that we invented uh, some of the stimulus that are using the moving dot. Okay, in this task, the, a lot of dot is presented on the screen. Okay, and uh, they are the moving in the left word or right word. The participant task is to judge if the majority of dot is moving in the right word or the left word. And basically, the, when the, they can discriminate the motion directions correctly, successfully, and then uh, they can get the reward. But uh, the reward uh, they finally the received is probabilistic uh, in some situations. Okay. In this task, okay, so we introduced uh, two different uh, yeah, uh, dimensions uh, in the stimulus condition. And one dimension is the uh, coherence of the motion. And the other dimension is the number of the moving dots. And the topic of the, this study is that the reward, pro, reward, the reward uh, that it's uh, delivered after this task it's uh, determined by the uh, uh, success or the failure of the discrimination of the, the task and the probability of the reward that is indicated by the number of the dots. Okay. So the, in this task, okay, so the uh, difficulty of task or the, in other cases, so success or the failure of the task and the, that is related to the, our skills and uh, yeah, of the motion, the uh, uh, discrimination, okay. Yes, it's, uh, yeah, this index is reflected by the coherence of the motion and then the, this coherence of motion is uh, correspond to the internal probability I explained. And in the task, the number of dots, okay, and uh, it indicates the probability of rewards that is received that after the participants can classify the motion direction is correctly. So the, yeah, the, this, the number of dots is uh, some uncertainty, but is, uh, that is uh, not uh, controllable uh, by the people. And that is given by the environment. So the, this number of the moving dots that correspond to the external probability. Okay. So the, in the task, the basically, the, we presented the two uh, different uh, type of the uh, uh, motion, the co coherent uh, moving the dots. And in one moving uh, dot options, the only the coherence motion is uh, con uh, changed across the trials. And the other option, the only the number of dots or the external probability is manipulated. Okay. And we give the two different type of the uh, options on the screen to the participant. And then the participant are uh, asked to compare the, these two different type of the probability. And then the choose the uh, better options that will give them the reward with a higher probability. Okay. So that by using the, this paradigm, okay, so we can see some of the brain process to compare the, this internal and the external probability the, before the vision making. Okay. Yes. So the, in the example of the driving to restaurant for dinner with the car navigation, then the, this environment probability it uh, corresponds to the number of the moving dots in this task. Okay. And the subject of probability, okay, so the whether the you can reach a restaurant or not, the, this internal probability is correspond to the coherence motions in this task. Okay. So is everything clear so far?
Okay. So, okay, this is the schedule of the task. Okay. In the task, okay, the two options, the one option is only the internal probability is manipulated, and the other option, the only the external probability is manipulated, is presented on the screen first, and then the participant is asked to choose the which tasks that they want to perform. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is a very important point, and I want to repeat this. Okay. Uh, in this task, okay, so the internal option is that uh, it contains the full of the dots. Okay. So that it means that the external probability of this internal option is always 100%. So that in this task, the option, uh, the, if the participant choose, if the participant uh, classifies the motion direction correctly, and then the, they can get the reward for the all trials. Okay. This external option, okay, so this external option is that the all dot is moving in the same direction. Okay. So it means that uh, there is no internal uncertainty. Okay. So the internal uncertainty is uh, nothing. So the, the participant never the fail to discriminate this motion. But the reward that is given is determined by the number of dots. So the reward is probabilistic, and then this the reward is given by the number of dots. Okay. So the participant's task is to guess how well that they can perform the, this internal task in this situation, and they estimate the probability that they can get reward. And then they compare the probability of reward that is given by the external probability option. And then they choose the better option that they should try. Okay. After that, they pick up the one task option. And then the chosen task is repeated in the second stage. Okay. And in the second stage, the dot is moving in the left word, right word. And then the, the participant are asked to judge if the Majority of dots is moving in the right or left one. And then the outcome, uh, the feedback is given here. And the outcome, or the correct or the incorrect, this uh, task is uh, determined by the, uh, the actual their response towards this task. And then the number of dots uh, that is contained in the stimulus they chose. Okay. chose. Okay. So, the, yeah, this is. We use, uh, okay, so, and in this task, another trick is that the uh, uh, motion direction of the dot is uh, different uh, in the, this first stage and second stage. In the first stage, the uh, old dot is moving is upward and downward, but uh, in the second stage, the dot is moving in the left or right word, and then the, uh, so the direction of the dot moving is uh, different, but the stimulus presented here in the first stage and second stage is exactly the same and just uh, rotated in the 90 degrees or the uh, minus 90 degrees. So by using the, these tricks, okay, so the, we can the prevent the participant from making uh, some decisions of the motion directions in the first stage. And we can the, associate this the first stage and second stage. So the second stage, the task is exactly the same in the first stage. And then the, yeah, they can the prospect their performance in the first stage. And then the, they uh, use some of the metacognitive process to uh, choose the task that they want to try. Okay. Is everything clear for now? Okay. Good. First, uh, we want to uh, focus on some the behavior the, during the, this metacognitive judging stage. Okay. Okay. So the, in this uh, task, okay, so the internal probability options and external probability options is manipulated the, from the lower probability to the higher probability, okay? lower probability to the higher probability. Okay? And we can uh, see the uh, preference to choose the, this internal probability options the, toward the internal the probability here. Okay? 
and the uh, result is like that. Okay, so the, the here, the, in the x axis of the, this figure, it shows the uh, internal probability and the actual internal probability. And this actual internal probability is correspond to the actual performance to classify the motion directions of the, this ambiguous motion. Okay. As you can see that the, from left side, the old dot is moving in the very random directions and it's very difficult to the discriminate motion direction. But in the, this right side, the old dot, most of dot is moving in the same directions and it's uh, very easy to discriminate uh, the motion. Okay, so that we use a different uh, coherence level, so a different randomness of the dot motion level uh, for the, this task. But uh, before this task, okay, we can uh, uh, examine the, how uh, well the participant can do that and as a baseline the performance. And then the, yeah, uh, we can uh, uh, convert uh, its uh, coherence uh, uh, of its coherence uh, condition towards uh, the actual performance. So that this actual performance is uh, plotted on the yeah uh, this x axis, okay. And the y axis the here it shows that uh, proportions of trials the, that the participant actually chose the internal the option preference. Okay. So the yeah it shows that some the uh, proportions of trials that the participant choose this internal option the in distance. Okay. As uh, clearly is shown here, okay. So the the proportion of trials that the internal option is chosen is uh, systematically the increase as a function of the internal probability. So the, it means that the participant, okay, the can uh, estimate this internal probability and then the, they can change the selections of the task internal task. Uh, during the, this metacognition task. Okay. In the right side, the, we show that the functions of the external probability the, that is shown uh, by the stimulus and the proportions of the uh, trials that actually the participant chose the external option. Okay. As shown here, the, this preference is uh, systematically increased as a function of the external probability. So the participant can uh, use this external probability information and then the cha and change the metacognitive judgment here. Uh, but uh, in actually, okay, the, in this task, the, we presented all combinations of the internal probability and the external probability. So like that, okay. So if the participant okay, uh, perform this task in the very optimal way, okay, the participant should choose that this external task when the external probability is high or the internal probability is low, the one here. But if the internal probability is high and the dot is moving in the same directions, or the external probability is low, the dots contained in the external probability option is small, then the participant should choose the internal task option. Okay. So the, yeah, this is the behavior that is expected. And actually the performance is like that, okay? And human participant okay, uh, can uh, perform this task in the very optimal way. Okay. And this black trace shows that the baseline performance of the each internal probability option. Okay. Okay. As you can see here, around here, okay, the, the task preference, okay, it's changed the, across this border. Okay. So the in the below of the this uh, line. Okay, the run here, the participant the clearly the choose the, this internal option more. And above this line, 
that they chose like son of Ovidi's uh, work. And yeah, uh, this is uh, consistent with the uh, expectation of prediction. And another interesting thing is that uh, their the preference, uh, task preference is a bit biased uh, towards the uh, internal probability. Okay, the line of the 50% is uh, slightly the below the line of the actual the performance. Okay, so the, it may reflect that uh, some of the difference of the estimation of the process of the subjective and internal probability and external probability. Okay. okay. So uh, in the, yeah, uh, here, the, we quantified okay, the uh, uh, effect of the internal probability and external probability on the selection of the distance. Okay. In this analysis, okay, so the, this regression analysis uh, uh, estimate the proportion of the trials that the participant that chose the internal option, internal task, uh, by using the two regressors, the two effects, the one effect is internal probability and external probability. Okay. As shown here, okay, the effect of the internal probability is a positive. Uh, it's, that means that if the internal probability of the motion coherence is high, then the participants tend to choose the internal tasks uh, more often. Okay. But the uh, effect of the external probability is a negative. So it means that if the external probability is high, the participants tend not to choose the internal task and rather than to choose the external task. Okay. So these uh, two contrastive the effects uh, uh, confirm that the participant okay, change their the task selections based on both internal task option, internal probability and external probability. Okay. Okay. And next, uh, yeah, uh, we evaluated to the uh, classify the, some of the trials in the below the, this line. So the, some of the trials that the internal option selection is optimal and the trials that is above this line, the trials that the external the probability option is the optimal to choose. Okay. Okay. So that in this index, it shows that okay, the, uh, uh, this index uh, is a type two the AROC uh, is the index of the metacognition, and then the, this index uh, close to one. The, if the, they perfectly the classify the internal the optimal options as the internal task selection and the external the optimal the task conditions uh, to the external the task selection. Okay, and if they uh, choose okay uh, the this uh, internal task and uh, maybe in the random way in this. Uh, 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 it's the stimulus conditions that this index is uh, around uh, 0 0.5. Okay. Okay. I see here, okay, the, this type 2 AROC index is uh, higher than the, this chance. So it means that uh, the, uh, most of the participant has a good skill to classify the, these two types of trials uh, based on the, the, the actual performance. Okay. And uh, this index, the type one, the ARC index, it shows that uh, the, the baseline performance of the motion direction, the discrimination towards uh, this uh, is uh, the motion coherence condition. Okay, so this index is higher than the chance. That means that uh, the all participant can do the this uh, uh, motion the, uh, task uh, in a reliable way. Make sense so far? Okay. okay. And we uh, also the focus on the yeah, uh, performance of the second perception decision stage. Okay. In the uh, this perception decision stage, okay, 
uh, some trials, the participant choose the internal task, and some trials, the participant choose the external task. Okay? When they chose the internal task, okay, the performance is a uh, uh, function of the coherence okay, or the internal probability. Okay? Uh, that is very natural. And then, the, yeah, that is good. And for the external task options, the, their performance or the probability of the, they get rewards is a function of the external probability. Okay? Well, that is natural and that's good. But uh, one the interesting observation is that the effect of the external probability on the internal task performance here. Okay? So that this external probability is related to the external probability in the first stage. And then, but, and this uh, uh, option is not available during the, this second stage. But this probability is uh, affect on the uh, uh, internal task performance. Okay, so that we consider the, the effect the, that uh, that is comes from the their the task selection here. Okay, the, in the first stage, if the external probability is very high, the motivation to the choose the external probability is very high for the participant. Okay, so that in the situation that the external probability high, the participants rarely choose the internal task option. But in some situations, the participant is super confident about the internal task, even when the external task option probability is very high. In these situations, they intended to choose the internal option then. So the performance of this task is very high. So the, we think that uh, this external probability is effect on the internal pass performance in the second perceptual vision stage. Okay, make sense? Okay. Okay. So first we want to focus on the uh, neural activity that, that is collected in the MRI experiment. Okay. Uh, we want to focus on the perceptual vision stage first. Okay. Okay. So the, uh, please uh, remember the example of the uh, driving to the restaurant for dinner with the kind of vision here, and we are interested in the external and internal probability. Okay. In this analysis, okay, we want to focus on the yeah uh, okay the some the common neural substrate for the both external and internal probability okay. uh, during the, the second perceptual vision stage. Okay. Uh, yeah, as seen here, the many the brain regions, including the, some prefrontal region and posterior parietal region, is uh, commonly active uh, in correlation with the internal and external probability. Okay, so the one area is the uh, inferior parietal lobule, and this area is known to relate to the, some the visual motion the processing systems. Okay, and another the interesting area is the uh, area 8A, and that is the uh, homologue of the monkey frontal eye field, and uh, that is uh, very important for the visual motor the processing too. So the these two brain areas is uh, commonly active towards uh, internal and probability, internal and external probability here. Okay. And another interesting uh, uh, brain site is the uh, ventromedial prefrontal cortex. Okay. So this ventromedial prefrontal cortex is known to encode some value of the options and that reflects some probability of the rewards that the participant can get, okay? okay. This ventromedial prefrontal cortex is active in response to the internal probability and external probability there, here, okay? And yeah, this trace uh, shows that uh, some effects uh, is correlated to the chosen internal probability, cho uh, chosen internal probability and chosen external probability, okay? The, this area is response to the the option the, they actually choose. 
but uh, this same area is not active towards the uh, declined options in the previous stage, okay, like that. Okay, so that, that is uh, consistent with the previous works on the features of the ventral medial prefrontal cortex. Okay. Next, we want to focus on some neural substrate that is specific for the internal probability here. Okay. The results are here, and we found that the front polar cortex, the medial part of the front polar cortex, is uh, active only in response to the internal probability, but it is not uh, active uh, towards the external probability. Okay. So the, we uh, consider that, that we think that uh, this brain region is important for the, some uh, monitoring of the internal probability the, during the vision making. Okay, make sense so far? Okay. okay, so the next we want to move to the, uh, some of the brain mechanism of the metacognitive judgment in the first stage. Okay. 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 And in this analysis, we focus on the, uh, some brain mechanisms that are related to the internal probability here because uh, we find that only the substrate for the internal probability uh, during this metacognitive judging stage, okay? The shown in this slide, okay? The anterolateral prefrontal cortex, where is the uh, uh, anterior the lateral side of the, yeah, this prefrontal cortex is active the, towards the uh, internal the probability uh, during the first prospective metacognitive judgment stage. But the uh, interesting thing is that uh, this anterolateral prefrontal cortex is active to both uh, chosen internal probability and unchosen internal probability, okay? In this task, okay, the participant have to choose the internal task option or the external task option in the first metacognitive judgment stage. But in some case, okay, the participant choose the uh, internal probability option and they do the, this, this task. But in other trials, the participant choose the external task and then they rejected the internal the, uh, task option. But this area, and the lateral prefrontal cortex is encoding this uh, rejected the internal probability option here. So this is one of the interesting points, okay? And second interesting point is that the both uh, in chosen internal probability and unchosen internal probability is related to the activity of the anterior prefrontal cortex, but the slope, the speed of the accumulating of the effect is the different between the chosen and unchosen and rejected uh, internal probability, okay? For the chosen internal probability, the effect is increasing is more quickly and the slope is very steep, okay? But for unchosen internal probability, okay, the accumulations of the effect is very slow and the slope is uh, less steep, okay? And uh, this slope is different across the subject, okay? But uh, during the perceptual vision stage, okay, the anterior prefrontal cortex is active Towards both the chosen and unchosen internal probability, okay? but uh, there is no effect of the uh, slope or the accumulation of the signals. Okay? This result okay, dem uh, demonstrates that uh, this anterior prefrontal cortex is contribute to the subjective evaluation of the internal probability, okay? and our hypothesis is that uh, the participant okay, and, uh, has a very confident to perform this internal probability task and then the, some of the accumulation of origins for the internal probability is high. And then the finally they choose this internal probability option. And if the, uh, this evidence accumulation is very slow 
and they are less confident, and then the, they finally reject the uh, to choose the internal probability option. So the, we hypothesize that the anterolateral prefrontal cortex is some the uh, est estimator of the, of the internal the probability that during the prospective and the conscious judgment. Okay, make sense? Okay. And we also uh, examine the uh, effect of the, this evidence, uh, internal evidence accumulations and uh, activity of the internal probability uh, across the participant, okay? As shown in the this top row, okay? And the lateral, the prefrontal cortex uh, activity, okay? Uh, uh, that is uh, evaluated by the difference in the slope of the towards the chosen internal option and the unchosen internal option, okay, is uh, correlated with uh, metacognitive judgment performance across subject, okay, here, the, this uh, performance index and then the, the difference between the slope is uh, correlated, okay. But uh, yeah, at but uh, this is uh, not uh, significant uh, for the front polar uh, cortex. For, but uh, in contrast, uh, for the front polar cortex here, is that uh, is coding the internal probability during the second passive decision making stage. And this activity is correlated with uh, performance of the perceptual decision task here. Okay, okay so the, this uh, contrasted uh, 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 the features of the anterolateral prefrontal cortex and front polar cortex, okay, okay, uh, the shows that uh, this anterolateral prefrontal cortex is uh, important for some of the evaluations and internal probabilities uh, during the metacognition. And then the front polar cortex is uh, important for the, to perform the internal task or the, to uh, estimate some the confidence of the internal tasks uh, during the decision making. Okay. Okay. Finally, okay, uh, we examined some of the causal effect of the anterolateral prefrontal cortex disruption by applying the TMS stimulation the transcranial the magnetic stimulation. Okay. So the, by applying the, this TMS, the, we can the silence some of the brain region activity for a few hours okay, without any the invasiveness uh, 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 effect. Okay. Okay. So the, we applied the, this TMS to the anterior prefrontal cortex, and then the, we examined how the, the metacognitive the task preference changed. Okay. Okay. So the, yeah, this figure here the shows the baseline performance okay, of the, this uh, metacognitive the selection task here. Okay. As shown in the uh, figure, and then the, yeah, the participant uh, performance is consistent with the MRI experiment, the previous experiment. Okay. And when the, we apply the, this TMS to this brain site, okay, the activity, the, uh, sorry, the uh, preference to the internal task uh, is uh, slightly changed. And uh, actually some of the boundary of the to choose the internal and external option uh, is uh, a bit shifted. And uh, some patterns around here is a bit different. So the, this right here shows some of the difference of the, this uh, anterolateral prefrontal stimulation condition and no stimulation, stimulation condition. And then that you can see that uh, around this uh, uh, boundary, the, based on the baseline the full, uh, task performance, okay, the, their the task uh, selection, uh, the, the preference of the task selection to change uh, dramatically. So uh, finally, okay, 
be uh, evaluated the performance index uh, after the anterior prefrontal stimulation and the control stimulation. Okay, I think here some of the basic the perceptual decision making performance did not change by the stimulation of the anterior prefrontal cortex and control the stimulation. And for the metacognition, the performance index for the control conditions, there is no difference the, between the stimulation and the no stimulation. But for the anterolateral prefrontal cortex stimulation, the, after the stimulation, the metacognitive performance is uh, impaired as compared with the no stimulation conditions. Okay? So the, this result uh, shows that anterolateral prefrontal cortex is crucial for the prospective metacognition in the first stage, but uh, it is uh, not for the perceptual decision making. So. Okay, so the, in this study, the, we found that the anterolateral prefrontal cortex is a specific site to accumulate evidence of the internal probability for the prospective metacognition judgment. Second, okay, we want to show the, our different study uh, that we examine the neural process of the metacognition for pass. Okay, as I explained in the very the slide the beginning, okay, so the metacognition is very important for the thinking about the past vision. Okay, to test for the this past metacognition, we designed some the retrospective metacognition task for the macaque monkeys. Okay. In the task, it uh, uh, consists of the two stages. Okay. In the first stages, the monkey memorizes the four pictures that is clearly presented on the screen. And then the, their task is to judge if the, this the choice option is included in the encoded the item list. Uh, the, the, before the yeah this retrieval phase, okay. and after this uh, mnemonic, the memory decisions, okay, the monkeys cannot get any reward, but instead of that, the, they are given uh, another stage the, that asks the monkey to have some the gamble of the high bet or low bet option. In the, this uh, second bet stage, okay, if they choose the high bet option, okay, if the monkey's uh, performance is correct in the previous memory stage, that they can get uh, plenty of reward. But if they fail in the previous memory stage, the, they cannot get any reward and then the, they give the wrong time out as a penalty. Okay? And if the monkey chose this low bet option, Okay. The monkey can get a small amount of reward, respective of the, their performance in the memory stage. Okay. So that by using this paradigm, okay, so the, if the monkey choose the high bet option, if the, they think that the, they uh, success in the previous stage, okay. but if the monkey the, thinks that uh, they are not confident and they are uncertain, if the, they can give the correct answer in the memory stage, the monkey the, should choose the low bet option. Okay? By doing using this strategy, the, they can uh, maximize the reward they can finally get. And actually, the monkeys uh, performed this task in the very optimal way. So the, uh, that is, uh, if the monkey thinks that the monkey give the correct answer the here, the monkey choose the high bet option more, and if monkey thinks that uh, they are failed in the previous stage, and then uh, they choose a low bit option more. Okay. And in the, this FMR study, okay, we look for some brain regions that reflect the, this metacognitive performance. Okay. And as seen here, Okay, so that we uh, okay, uh, basically examine some of the correlations of the each brain region 
with the uh, metacognitive performance here. And uh, interestingly, the, this front polar cortex is uh, focally the correlated with the metacognitive performance of the uh, novel items judgment. So the, yeah, in this task, actually the half of the riders, uh, monkeys uh, uh, recognize that uh, the, this picture is uh, not included in the encoded picture list. Okay? In this situation, the monkey do some of the novelty judgment. Okay? And in the bed stage, the, uh, after that, the, in the bed stage, the, they think about the, their novelty judgment. Okay? In this uh, metacognitive process of the novelty judgment, it's uh, the, uh, this condition. And front polar cortex is a, a specific locus for the, this self evaluation of the uh, novel item judgment. Okay? But in contrast towards the uh, metacognitive judgment of the memorized items, okay, there's, a, there's a no site. Okay, there is uh, correlated uh, with the uh, metacognitive performance, especially in the uh, front polar cortex. And instead, the, those lateral prefrontal cortex called the uh, area nine, it's uh, correlated with the uh, metacognitive performance of the memorized items, okay? So we uh, apply some of the muscles. So the, that is a GABA A receptor, the, uh, agonist and uh, the, that silencing the neuronal firings for the several hours. Okay? We apply the, this muscimol to the front polar cortex or the dorsolateral cortex, and then the, we examine the metacognitive the, uh, task the performance index change. Okay? Uh, as expected, uh, for the novel items, okay, or for the memorized items, the, this metacognitive judgment performance is not changed, uh, not different across the Mushimori injection condition and controls the saline injection con uh, conditions. Okay. But towards the novel items, okay, the, this metacognitive performance index is impaired okay, as compared to the saline condition. But for the dorsal, dorsal prefrontal injection, okay, the metacognitive performance index is impaired towards memorized items as compared uh, in the Mushimal con injection conditions as compared to the Sairan injection conditions. But towards the novel items, there is no difference uh, in the in, uh, impairment uh, across the uh, uh, Mushimal and Sairan conditions. Okay? So the, this the studies uh, show that uh, from the polar cortex and then the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, it's important for the uh, metacognitive judgment of the novelty and metacognitive judgment of the memory. And this, this, this. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So the, in this, uh, in our other study, okay, in the first human study, okay, we found that the front polar cortex, uh, area 10, is uh, important for the evaluation of the current confidence. So that, that is uh, related to the activity of the, uh, during the second perception vision stage in the human experiment, okay? And in the macaque monkey the experiment, okay? Area nine is important for the confident judgment of the memory and area 10, the front polar cortex, is important for the confident judgment of the novelty. Okay, so that is area ten and nine is important for the metacognition for past or the present. But for the future metacognition, we found that the uh, anterolateral prefrontal cortex is uh, critical. So that in our studies, uh, for the first time, shows that the critical locus for the past metacognition and future metacognition is uh, separated and independent. And the, another the, uh, interesting the thing for me is that the evolutionary origin of the, this neural substrate in prospective metacognition. Okay? In the human study, we found that uh, this anterolateral prefrontal cortex, area 47, is important for the prospective metacognition. And 
but uh, this brain region is evolutionarily noble, and there's no function counterpart is found in the macaque monkey. Okay. In the studies from the Lashua's lab, the, this study is uh, um, to examine the yeah, functional the counterpart of the one brain regions okay, based on the functional connectivity patterns uh, across uh, the other the brain regions. Okay, like that, okay. So the, in this study, the, uh, they compared some the uh, whole, uh, the pattern of the functional connectivity from the one human brain region. And then they compare the another the monkey's uh, regions. And then they compare the similarity of the action, uh, functional connectivity pattern. And then the, they determine the fish monkey brain region is correspond to the fish human the brain region, okay? By using this method, the most of the monkey's uh, brain regions uh, can be uh, assigned to the human brain regions. But this area 47, the anterior prefrontal cortex has no functional counterpart in the macaque monkeys. Okay. But in our the ongoing project, okay, uh, we found that macaque monkeys perform this task in the very similar way to the humans. Okay. So, so now so we conducting the functional MRI experiment in the monkeys, and then the, we were looking for some of the brain site that is uh, corresponding to the area uh, 47, uh, the lateral prefrontal cortex, that is missing uh, based on the uh, comparison of the functional the, uh, connectivity network. Okay. So the, yeah. Uh, this is the collaborators of the, our studies in the human studies in the Oxford and the monkey studies in Tokyo. Okay. And uh, we started the, uh, my, I started my own lab the, from this July at Wiken CBS. And our interest is the future imagination, social cognition, curiosity, and metacognition in primates. And, we use uh, this method like the functional connectivity, a functional MRI, electrophysiology, and optogenetic. And uh, we want to show the neural the mechanism of the, these highly the cognitive functions. And, and uh, together with uh, this method, okay, we use a comparative neuroscience method and we use a functional MRI and we want to compare the uh, brain mechanism with the humans and macaque monkeys, okay? Uh, based on the, these uh, two different uh, uh, approach, the, we want to uh, reveal the, how the, our future imagination or the social cognition is generated from the, our neural circuit, okay? If you are interested in our research or the, if you want to join in our office, please uh, contact with me. Uh, by sending me an email. Okay. okay. So the, thank you very much for the paying attention to my talk. <laughs>